from all corners of the globe to your ears, it's the Midnight Movie Cowboys. Sometimes informative, sometimes controversial, but always unpredictable. It's the Midnight Movie Cowboys podcast with your hosts, Hunter, John, and Stu. And now, on with the show. Hello everybody, welcome to the Midnight Movie Cowboys for this week. You've got myself, Stuart, here in Melbourne, Australia. And you've got, um, not in Denver, Colorado, John Grace. John is away on holiday this week. He was going to come in and sort of finagle it where you can work. I said, listen, mate, take the week off. Just don't worry about it. Go with the family. Enjoy your break. We've still got Hunter away, of course. But I said, I reckon I'll be able to swing to get Nez on. So, um... Thank you, my friend, Anthony Nez, but the Nez coming on. Um, and actually, when I mentioned to John last week, when we finished recording the Kolchak episode, I said, I'd like to get Anthony on and maybe talk about Jimmy Savile, which is who we're talking about tonight. And John said, yes, I want to hear that. Yes. <laughs> I, said, I, think right. the, I think John's touched the bullet this week, to be honest. Oh, I think he has. Yeah, he knows damn well. I won't be there or he won't be there so he can get away with it. Um so anyway, this episode, we're going to entitle My Case Comes Up Next Thursday. The Times or the Crimes of Jimmy Savile. Because there's a lot, isn't there, Nez? There's a lot oh, of them. 50, 50 years of child sex abuse. 50 years of lies. 50 years of sick comedy. 50 years of cover-ups. 50 yeah. years of block investigations. 50 years of stonewalling. That's yep. just what it is. It's a lot. Anyway, we've got a few well, we've got a few announcements to make. First up, before me and Anthony get straight into it. Um, first up, uh, I have put my hand up and will be hosting or co-hosting a few episodes of Watch This Movie um, in a few weeks' time. So uh, listen for me over there. However, that will not affect the MMC here. So I want you hearing that going, oh shit, Stu's buggered off elsewhere, it's going to affect the MMC. No, it's not. I've already spoken to Brett and Eric and said, look, I'll, I'll, I'll willingly put my hand up, I'll help out, I'll come on and, and co-host with Brett while Eric's away, while his wife has his, his their um has their son, due in a few days now. and um, But it can't interfere with the MMC, and they said, no, not at all. Um, so there's that. Uh... Secondly, we now have a Ko-Fi page or Ko-Fi account. And what that is, uh, we've been doing this for, geez, 12 years come next month, August. So it's, it's been a long time. Um, we've really sort of stalled on the idea of charging for episodes. We don't want to do that. We've always said this thing should be free. Um but with costs that are incurring, i.e. Zoom now, um, also the audio, which is our, our Podbean server, which we've had from the start, we don't want to lose the Podbean server and say, well, because we've got no money coming in and times are tough and we're struggling a bit, something has to give, well, we're getting more hits on YouTube, getting more subs there, and bye-bye audio. We don't We don't want to do that. We said as soon as we ever did YouTube, we would never kill the audio, and we mean it. We're not going to do that. However, um, what we are asking is that if people could just sort of donate a few bucks here and there, believe me, none of it is going to go to, uh, uh, you know, cocaine and hookers and stuff like that, and <laughs> wild well, nights on the town. What do you have a hand, Stu? I mean, you know, I mean. <laughs> you could have some fun, but I mean, I'm I'm honest, and we're, we're pretty honest over here. It, literally, every cent will go into paying for the Zoom server, paying for the Podbean, and anything else we've got left over will go for any new software we can get that will help improve the show. Obviously, software some are free, but some are not. You got to pay for them, um, and it's just things like that just to keep this machine going. Because I mean, I I really dread the day this thing stops. But, you know, I'm not trying to throw the doomsday clock up to, you know, one minute at the midnight, but we do kind of need some, a bit of financial help. Even if it's, you know, and we have had some. Granted, we've had some. Uh, you know, and I'll read out, and what we'll do every week, we will read out the people who have donated 
We won't say the amount they've donated. That's private between them and us. But we'll give out their names and just give them a shout out as uh, we promised we would. Um, but look, even if you donate, say, uh, you know, and you've got an option on there. You've got a one-time thing which you can give. You can give, you know, 10, 20, whatever, which some people have done and, and more. Or you can have a recurring one, uh, which will be, you know, three dollars. You know, if you want to give three dollars, you want to give four dollars. You want to give five dollars a month. If you want to give that even, it's up to you. <laughs> um, and the thing is, as well, the amount is in Australian dollars, so it's not U.S. dollars. It's not where Anthony is, Great British pounds. It's Australian dollars. So really, if you're in the UK. And you're giving, say, five bucks a month, it's what, three quid, Anthony? About that? Yeah. In the yeah. US, it's about the same, about three, three fifty US. It's not much, but honestly, every bit snowballs into an amount we can go, right, we can pay that this month. We gather enough, we can pay it a year in advance, even. You know, it just all happens. It all um depends how it happens. But that's that. Like I said, we've really held off asking. Um, but Now's the time to say, hey, look, you know, don't be a ninja watcher. Throw in a few bucks. It, you won't even know it's gone. Even if you, you know, allow five, five Australian bucks a month, you ain't going to miss it. You ain't, and, and believe me, you know, every bit that totals up, you are keeping this show running. You really are. Because, um, you know, fees have gone up. Zoom fees have gone up and, you know... We're all married men now, or married men and fathers now. So, um, you know, there's that. So, yeah. And before we get into talking about um, filth monger Jimmy Savile, I will read out the names of the people who are very kind to donate. Uh, Nez said you, you're going to try and donate, but you've been yeah, having if, problems. If I can something like that to do with people in terms of new accounts, I'll, I'll, I'll do it to the idea. Lovely. Yeah, you're, okay. you're a champion, Anthony. All right, so thank you to, in no particular order, the following people. Um, Cecil Birch, um, Trent Reynolds. I'm going to try and get this one right. Holger Haas. Yeah, oh yeah, Holger. Holger Haas. <laughs> I think I said I would try my best to get Holger's name right. Um, <laughs> Brandon Boyle and he, also our friend Eric Mulder. Um, thank you very much. Some of those guys have done one-offs couple of them have done recurring payments each month it is it, look honestly you know it really helps guys it honestly does you know I'm, I'm a pretty jovial sort of guy i'm a jokey sort of fella but i'm i'm being dead serious now it really helps out and you know it's just yeah just a few bucks and you believe me if enough people do it this show will be ticking on because we love we really love doing it we really do so um that's that so, it's said, that the, sorry, just it's said that the average podcast on the average lifespan is like over side of five years. This has gone on for 12. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, you've, you've, really, you've really done well. You've yeah. Really oh, yeah. Well. Yeah. And the thing is, I think I read um, sometime a while back the average podcast life was 12 episodes. Then people yeah, give yeah, up. Yeah. I think that's a bit lenient. I, I People, when you, apart from us, because we were slow out of the gate, man, when we started. We were one here, one there. It wasn't until, obviously, when John came along, we really started picking up steam. But most people tend to become very, very quick when they start with a podcast. They're energized. And they go bang, 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 bang. They rip out episodes. But then they drop away. We've gone the other way. They just fade. They fade. Exactly. They fade. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Um, finally, for this episode, uh, there is no whip out your junk. Yes, I have stuff. I dare say Anthony's got stuff. But be, yeah. the, with the subject that matter at hand, it would be really odd to... Jar, jarring to say the least. Yeah, it'd be too jarring for me to hold up and go, hey, look what I picked up at the record for you yesterday, which I did pick up some things, but me to go, <laughs> oh, look, I picked this up. I finally found it. And then go, Jimmy Savile. Well, it would just, yeah, it would just be the you know the elephant in the room, the sore thumb, yeah. whatever phrase you want to use. So we bet you junk. Suspended for this week. Back next week with some goodies that uh, that I've got on my part, and I can speak for anyway. But um, all right, mate. Let's uh, let's get into it. Um, obviously, just, just, 
Go on, Ify. No, sorry, just, say, um, just to set the scene, if you were living in England in, in the late 70s, early 80s, you would see Savile, every bank holiday in Mummy on Jimmel Fix. It was never really a recurring series. You only saw like four or five episodes a year, and even just every bank holiday. You would basically see him once a month on top of the pops. Uh, he was just like one, one of the, the rotational presenters. You'd hear him on BBC Radio Tier of the Week where he was a regular, a regular presenter. You'd see him occasionally on the TV commercial, say the British Rail. <laughs> British Rail hired him to basically flood the, the, the fucking train services in 1981. Um, you'd see him occasionally pop up on a public safety commercial for, for car safety, specifically seat, seat belts, clank click. And that would be that. But, but even there, if he wasn't on television and you didn't hear him on radio, he'd still be present because his, his level of charity fundraiser was so high profile. It was just news. It was newsworthy. Jimmy Savile's running running from Land's End to John O'Gross. Put the money in the bucket, and people would. And the cameras would follow him all the way from Scotland down to Cornwall. Um, Jimmy's raising money this week for Stoke Mandeville. He's raising money this week for Broadmoor. He's raising money this week for Duncroft Reform School for Girls. Um, and he'd just be hyper. Jimmy was such an egocentric and narcissist, he would literally turn up for the opening of an envelope. But even there, even that aside... He would just be new, he would just be newsworthy. The, the, the London media would regard him as a news story because he would always be out somewhere fundraising, literally just somewhere else. I mean, I I think I think I think he loved on. I, I think Savile was altruistic in the sense that he 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 did love fundraising. He absolutely loved it. But on the other hand, it got him an awful lot of freedom. An I want to ask you that, Anthony. I when I finished watching the documentary that we're discussing tonight, which was. Uh, British horror story, the Jimmy Savile. It's on Netflix, a two-parter. Um, I thought to myself, I want to ask Anthony this: Was his fundraising just a smokescreen for the crimes he committed to get away with it? It, it, it? it wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, on the one hand, he did believe in it. He absolutely believed in it to his core. That basically, he he got it into his head that frankly he was doing it, which which he was. <laughs> literally millions of pounds every year for various causes and charities. But he wasn't daft about it. He knew full well that, frankly, he was getting an awful lot of access. In respect of Broadmoor, they, they put him on the board of the hospital. Broadmoor's basically Britain's most dangerous top security mental hospital. It's 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 where the, 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 the creme de la creme of depraved. Wasn't the, uh, the, Ronnie Cray was there, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, Ronnie, Ron, the, 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 uh, after a couple of years, they sent him back into the prison population. It's like, oh, really? Sometimes so, so Peter Sackler, the Yorkshire Ripper, was there. Uh, oh. There's a couple of terrorists there, a couple of serial killers there. It's, oh, it's, um, so I know who was there as well, Anthony, was uh, Charles Bronson, the... Yeah, yeah. Not yeah, the actor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Although I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, Bronson... Bronson but the funny thing is, Bronson's, Bronson's still there as far as I'm aware. But he's not the worst of Broadmoor, because the worst of Broadmoor is a, guy, is a serial killer called Peter Maunsley. He's local. He, he specialised in... He's a serial killer who specialised in ser- killing serial killers of Broadmoor. He, he, he would literally kill, target other serial killers. It's like, De- it's like Dexter played off a reel. He Shit. would target other serial killers and he would kill them. And he's been... He, he's, he, was, he was regarded so dangerous by Broadmoor and the administration, they put, him in a, they put him in a glass cell on his own and he's been there for 40 years uh, with cardboard furniture. And he's like 81 years of age. He's just like... Just a book, but that's that's tangents. Um, but yeah, uh, they they were so impressed with Jimmy, they put him on the board, and they gave him his own set of keys, and they gave him his own his own flat, and Jimmy had a base, and Jimmy could basically come and go as he pleased from Broadmoor, and because he had keys, um, he would basically see to it that certain patients were accessed and abused, some physical physically handicapped, some mentally handicapped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's yeah, the full set of keys. And off he went, and it was, and, he, and nobody asked any questions. Literally, I mean, the, the, the Department of Health should have been asking questions immediately, but Jimmy was Jimmy, and you know, he only ever meant any good. Mm-hmm. And got a set of keys, and off he went, and literally nobody stopped him. That um, was the thing I was thinking about as well was with the fundraising, did they suspect about what he was up to? But said, but look, he raises so much money. Um, no. It doesn't matter. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy wasn't Jimmy wasn't that because he knew for well that he could theoretically turn around, which would question the be asked and say, um, you know, 
how much money did that guy raise for this hospital last year? Four million pounds. Mm. Well, I feel like raising some more money next year because I've got a couple of marathons lined up. So um, is another four million pounds coming your way next year? And yeah. it was, I mean, we know that for sure, but it was all, you suspect it was all done on the basis of a modern wing. But bear in mind, I mean, 30, 40 years ago, Britain was a very trusting place where like, People just assumed that the BBC didn't like. They assumed that the Sun newspaper didn't like. The Guardian didn't like. Daily Mirror didn't like. ITV didn't like. But the governments and MPs didn't like. It was a radically different place. People were just automatically far more trusting, mm. which was just the type of fertile ground for Jimmy Savile to operate. And and he and he did. And, he, and he, whether or not he he was aware of the fact that frankly he was using such fertile such a, such a trusting environment and and it was a trusting environment it's just again another question altogether but people were just far more trusting back then yeah. no question about it right. these days anything else yeah well the uh the digital age or lack of saved jimmy savile before yeah. his death yeah. because well, uh well, well one of the points not one of the points missed in the documentary was that jimmy escaped justice yeah, uh, but and, and the victims didn't get the justice that frankly, really, they they were warranted. But Jim, it, it wasn't that simple because Jimmy had for many many years a close personal friend called Ray Terrett, and Ray Terrett was basically for decades his, his chauffeur, his factotum, and a fixer. And what Ray consequently would do is he would go out on when Jimmy was on a tour, is he basically procure young girls for himself and Jimmy, and it just lasted for years. When Jimmy Savile died in 2011, uh, he got away with it. But Ray Terrett didn't because in 2012, he was arrested in connection with multiple allegations of historical child sex abuse. And he was charged in 2014. It's 15, 16 charges, maybe more. Yeah. And in 2015, Ray Terrett went down. He went down and he went down for 25 years. He went down for 25 years and he died in prison May last year. So although Jimmy Savile did get away with it. His, his chauffeur and his fix, his fix and his factosum didn't get away with it at all. Ray Terry gives an, a loose idea of what, what would have happened to Jimmy Savile if Jimmy Savile had lived. He would, have won, he would have gone the way of Ray Terry. The only difference would have been, it wouldn't have been 25 years, it would have been 35 to 55 because there were just so many complaints and so many victims. But, but, Terry, but Terry certainly didn't get away with it at all. Um, so it was really a case of he going to jail for the, the, not just his own crimes, but the crimes of his boss. Yeah, uh, and getting away with it doesn't mean you got away with it in the living physical form. You did, but your legacy, your name is stained forever from from now yeah, on. Yeah. As it, as it stands, his body is. They they did remove this. They did remove shortly afterwards the headstones from his grave at Scarborough Cemetery, but his body still is. Is his casket still there? And obviously, if I, in a way, it doesn't really matter. It's been must remains um but yeah i mean there are there are victims who've openly called for his cost with the base to be just just in, just Exhumed, dis yeah. just dis disinterred and just just cremated um uh, whoever gets the remains does doesn't does really matter but this yeah. is probably still there in the cemetery um all right anyway what we'll do is we will um we will give a uh, visual image, a few visual images of Jimmy Savile. So you can, for those of you watching who don't know who we're talking about, what he looks like, uh, you can put in a bit of context. So um, we're going to share the screen here. And... Once a dead or alive. There you go. There he is there with his, uh, you know, famous cigar that he's uh, always using. Um... What else we got? Let's look for posse and hunt the fucker down. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you know, not a particularly good looking fellow. Actually, yeah. very, very unattractive fellow. There he is there. Um, yeah, you know. Yeah. I can't well. see if Jimmy's I can't see if Jimmy's still wearing one of his eyeball wings. Um and we'll get to minute. that. We'll get to that. Uh there he is there. Uh, there he is there. Teeth rotted from his cigars uh, over the years. Uh shamelessly you know, accepting an OBE from the Queen. And uh, last pick, here he is uh, today. There he is. <laughs> What's that? I've never seen, geez, Jimmy, I've never seen you look that good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah, that's what Jimmy Savile looks like. Um, but, yeah, 
Um, man, let's let's get into it. So, what was there? Five hundred uh, allegations in the end against him. Uh, of, of the five hundred allegations, the thing is still going up uh, over a fifty-year period. It's 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 believed that he stopped around about nineteen ninety, but the reality, frankly, he, he would have just basically carried on, and he would have yeah. carried on for the simple reason that there was no reason for him to stop. It's no. just like, well, well, who's going to stop me? Mm. I've got my mates in South Wales Police who bury complaints when they come into the department. I've got the media wrapped around my finger. Yeah. Um, but George Coleman QC, who basically was, the most, was at the time, uh, was the most terrifying barrister in England. He could just, just deconstruct witnesses in, in, in the witness box in seconds. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've got, there's, there's literally just no reason to stop. So I think it, it just basically carried on, as indeed it did. Yeah. 500 plus allegations. Uh, they say allegedly, and we need to use this term allegedly, because uh, Savile was never convicted, that the ages range, I've heard from ages 5 to 75. I've heard from 2 to 75. Either way, that's just fucking disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and in the documentary, uh, which, which basically... The first part focuses on Savile and his rise and the rumbling start coming towards the end of that first part yeah. about sexual assault with young girls. And with girls, we're not talking girls of 19, 20. We're talking 13, 14 yeah. teenagers uh, that you'd see on Top of the Pops. And some of the uh, footage of him out there literally grabbing a girl by the, uh, the cooch on national TV and she jumps. Again, nobody thought okay. it. No, nobody thought it at the time. I mean, if, if you have, say, for example, a, a Radio One presenter presenting Top of the Pops that week, and Jimmy Savile wasn't on it, it would be co- it would be common, and you wouldn't really think anything of it. But mm. that, that that was that you would assume at the time that was to be as far as it go. Oh, he's having a oh, he's having a laugh, and the girls having fun, and he's having fun. And isn't it all fucking great? And it's just like. Of course, with hindsight, it's it's radically different. It's yeah. really different. And that's the whole yeah. thing, Anthony. Is it's oh, it's Jimmy. It doesn't matter. That's just him. Well, no, it's not just fucking him. You know, it's the the BBC were as complicit as he was, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, Mark Lawson makes the point in the documentary that he did it for tw- Jimmy Savile. Well, Jimmy Savile, Jimmy Savile did this, that, and the other. Mark Lawson worked for the BBC for 20 years, so he would have heard the rumours as well. Everyone mm. in, the, in that documentary who worked for the BBC would have heard the rumours, and there were no there were no particular secrets. Um, but even there, it was always like, well, I have on the one hand, there might be something, and so on the other, and it's just like, ha, 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 ha. Uh, it's just Jimmy being Jimmy. Um, but every, every, every person in the documentary who worked for the BBC would have, would have heard the rumours. And, and the, the one of the worst aspects of this whole thing is that there are people who work with the BBC for still very much alive who got away with it. Mm. Um, there may even be some people who, who are still working at the BBC who did get away. Who, who did get away with it. Um, yeah, I mean, they, I mean, they know who they are. Uh, I'm not going to mention any names. No. But were, I, mean, I mean, you look at the people who work for the BBC over the last fifty years who, who went down. Um, the sexual abuse, child sexual abuse. It, it, it starts back in the late sixties. But used to read the one you used to. Jimmy Savile went to Radio One in 1968, a year after it started. Mm-hmm. And one of the original presenters at Radio One was a presenter called Chris Chris Denning. And Chris Denning in the early 70s went down for um, child sexual abuse. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm guessing at the time that in the early 60s, early 70s onwards, he would have found a very good environment for the beat at, at Radio One to operate. Because later, later on, after his death, John Peel would have dragged into the whole thing as well. John Peel was accused after his death of uh, having a sexual relationship with a 14-year-old girl and getting her pregnant and then pressurising her into actually getting an abortion, which mm. apparently she did. Yeah. Uh, but that only, came, that only came out after his death. But came, yeah. Peel always fostered the idea of, well, I'm not really working for Radio 1. It's just like, there's me and there's everybody else and I want nothing to do with them, which was actually true. But on the other hand, it didn't deny the possibility that he was just like using it as a platform for other, other things besides. And, and apparently he did. Um, and the strange thing is as well, Anthony, that before television, Savile was just a DJ, but he was huge. No. Jim, Jimmy Savile used, used to work at the he used to work at the pirate radio station at the English Channel until the mid sixties. Then he got a, he got a job at Radio Luxembourg. The reason the reason he got a job at Radio Luxembourg was because BBC Radio One 
put pressure on the government to deal with the pirate radio stations out in the channel. And in 1966, the, the, the Wilson government decided we'll, we'll set up a, a BBC pop based radio station to, to, to make sure that people stop listening to the pirate station, stop listening to Radio Luxembourg. And they set up BBC Radio 1 in 67. It was in 68 that Jimmy Savile went from Radio Luxembourg over to BBC Radio 1. He stayed there for many years. When he left, he, went, he simply went off to BBC Radio 2, which was like a radio station for older listeners. Um, but, but again, I mean, I, I suspect Radio 1 these days is radically different. I haven't heard it in years, but it's no, it's no secret that, frankly, it was radio station for swingers. If you were a presenter at Radio 1 and you were doing the, B- hang on, you were doing the BBC Radio 1 Summer Road Show, um, every day, then opportunities would avail themselves. And frankly, you'll be crazy if you didn't actually tip. That's how they saw it. Um, whether it be in young girls or in terms of women, uh, opportunities would avail themselves. And frankly, who's going to stop it? They, they just took the view. Well, who's going to stop us? It's just like, what, 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 are you, what, are you, what are you talking about? Bloody wallflower or something? That was the atmosphere it really wanted at the time. It, mm. But again, it's, it's radically different now. But I mean, I... I mean, I remember when Jimmy Savile died, there was an allegation made about Leonard Wasserstein because he made a, do- made a play for the day in 1972 for the BBC called The Year of the Sex Olympics, written by Nigel Neal. And it was only, it was only after Savile died, one of the crew members, you know, um, made the allegations she was sexually assaulted by Leonard Wasserstein in his dressing room. Oh, Anything? We, we, we don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, which, 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 on the other hand, Leonard Wasserstein in the mid 70s was arrested by, let's say, he was he was invited for questioning by West Yorkshire police in connection with the Yorkshire killing the Yorkshire Ripper killings. They roped him in. The, 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 the investigation was so out of control and so clueless. They were literally reduced to inter- putting Leonard Rossiter in an interrogation suite and interrogating him over the killings. And of course, frankly, he had to, to turn up, but nothing mm-hmm. in that one. No. Uh, but that, that, that's another issue. Uh, but yeah, Radio One was just like a greenhouse for that type of thing in the sixties and seventies. Um, I. I I sent you the link for a BBC documentary last week um, on the, the culture of BBC Radio 1 at the time, so from yeah. 1970. Um, Peel's in it, Kenny Everett's in it, Emperor Roscoe's in it, um, Tony Black, Blackburn's in it, and, it, and it's, 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 it's just like, it's just like a cult of personalities. Yeah. Just, 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 just cult of egocentric personalities, just run wise, it just, it just blossoms. Um, bloody hell. <laughs> I remember I asked Anthony the other day, I said, oh, um, something about Jimmy Savile on YouTube, and you go as basically a central hub for information oh, about no, Savile. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I saw the Netflix two parts. I also have a free. I downloaded onto my USD. We said about four documentaries, which one or two of them I'd seen, but the other two I hadn't. Um, it, again, they didn't really tell me anything. I didn't already know, but but it's it's nice to be reminded because it was that bad. There um, was but, one. It was one I watched last night called uh, uh, the Dark Side of Britain. It's called Jimmy Savile and the Ninth Circle. Oh man, that shook me up. That was a rough watch. Yeah. Some of the info oh, the one, on that. Other one, oh, ones I watched were um, Faking Gear, um, Exposed Exposure, mm-hmm. uh, which was a documentary that was, that was shown a year after Savile's death, uh, which was the result of the BBC's investigation, which was blocked. And the investigate the, the journalist there on, on that one, Marion Jones, took, resigned from the BBC and took his case load over to ITV. And ITV, it was yeah. He's yeah, on this they, documentary, they, isn't he? Yeah. He's on the documentary we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this, this is another crime, crime that should be written. Um, yeah, there's this, this, this quite, this quite a lot of subtle concept, you know, if, if, if you dare. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Just, it's just it, it's um, eye-opening. But some of the crimes of Savile were the hundreds of allegations. Um, the collection of eyeballs that Anthony brought up jokingly is not a joke. He was actually into collecting, allegedly collecting mm. glass eyeballs out of patients at um, Stoke Manor. Yeah, yeah, oh, oh, it, was, it, was, it was two hospitals. In 1970, Jimmy got a job part as a part-time porter. And this should have been from Dingle alarm bells immediately, but it did. Yeah. Part-time hospital porter was in James's hospital in Leeds, Jimmy's. And Jimmy had access as a porter to the mortuaries. And one of the things that Jimmy would do is he would identify patients who had glass eyes and he would remove the glass eyes. And he would remove the glass eyes so he could basically um, have rings made in, from, from them, including, so the, Jimmy, Jimmy on occasion, there are many points in the documentary where Jimmy would basically, being interviewed, would wear a really chunky 
gold ring. And that would be basically one of his, his glass his, his, his glass eyeball rings. Do you, um, do you know what it reminded me of, Anthony? Sorry to cut you off there. It no. reminded me of the uh, poster of A Clockwork Orange with the caricature yeah. of Malcolm McDowell, yeah. with the eyeball on the sleeve, on the cuff. Yeah, yeah. Yet yeah. Savile's gets, wearing them as uh, rings. It's just yeah. fucking staggering. It gets even worse because he also he also used eye, glass eyeballs uh, to fashion necklaces. And just to the point, after his death, one of his glass eyeball necklaces went on auction for 70, auction raised seventy five pounds. I mean, I would imagine if if, if items belonging to Jimmy Savile went on auction today, it, they, you would. Have, People would be willing to pay huge amounts of money for that type of memorabilia. It's just a, why? Who knows? Yeah, I can't work it, it out. But again, I mean, he he he, he, was at, he did it at Stoke Mandeville as well, but more so really at St James because again, as a portrait, you did have you did have access um, to the mortuaries, and you're more often than not on your own, and you've got to go in there. And he wasn't he wasn't daft. He, he just used it to his advantage. As regarding the allegations about sex with corpses, well, the allegations mm. about sex with corpses depend on what, which which part of the country you are living. If you were growing up in, in Yorkshire in the seventies, then in the playground you would be hearing jokes about Jimmy Savile. You would be hearing rumours about Jimmy Savile and children. You would be hearing Jimmy Savile uh, having rumours of Jimmy Savile having sex with corpses. But outside of Yorkshire, we you, you wouldn't read outside of the Yorkshire, by and large the London media, you wouldn't really hear anything. Where we were in Liverpool, but I was in Liverpool, we didn't hear a thing. Just no Jimmy Jimmy wasn't that way anything. It was just this, he was very Rococo, very large in the life, very technicolor, eccentric in the best English tradition. And Jimmy basically went nothing but but but, but good. Um though there's Jimmy raising a couple of minutes again. Um and that's he was like a figure of fun. And he was, I mean, I, I wish I could sit here student and say that he wasn't a part of my, my childhood, but the reality is that he, amongst other, other people besides, and many other peoples, um, he was, a, he sadly was a part of my childhood. And he was, and he wasn't, and he wasn't, and the worst part is, he wasn't, he wasn't a negative one. But again, it depended on which part, if, if, if you're a child living in Yorkshire, growing up in Yorkshire in the 70s and 80s, it's radically different altogether. You're hearing something, you're hearing things completely different, but, but elsewhere, not, no, it's just, it's, just, just, it's so strange, Ned, right. is how it's regional. Where, as you were saying, you living in Liverpool, you didn't hear a thing, but if you're over no. in Yorkshire, you knew a lot. So, like, yeah, I, I, I remember a couple of years ago, there's an old TV critical bit of Lewis Smith, and in the 19, 1995, he was, in, he, was in, he was in Yorkshire and he went into a cafe, and Jimmy Savile was there with Reed Terrace. And bit of Lewis Smith being the wag that he the years, he decided he was going to basically joke to Jimmy Savile's face about the fact that he he had sex with corpses. And he said, um, oh, Jimmy, how are you doing? Yeah, all right, all right, all right. I, I, you tell me, Jimmy, I'm curious, are you, are you still having sex with corpses? And at which point, Jimmy apparently just took a puff of a cigar and just laughed his head off. That's how he just basically deflected it. Um, okay. And I wish for bits of, bits of Lewis Smith just thought, yeah, he's still having sex with corpses. That's how he was. <clears throat> yep. Uh, which is another thing we need to uh, bring up about the fact that when his mother died, he was very close to his mother. Yeah, um, yeah. When his mother this, died, that, 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 yeah. he, he sat with her corpse. He sat with her yeah. corpse for five days. Yeah. Now, Anthony, there's also allegations. I, I find this one a bit rich. Allegations that he may have had sex with his mother's corpse. I, I look. Don't know. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I mean this, this, this is one of the things that's baffling. He wasn't an only child. No. Uh, he, had, he had six six other siblings. Um, so the, the other, uh, he wouldn't be the only one who was actually grieving for that, that, that particular week. I don't think he would have had the opportunity to do it, but I could be wrong. But, I mean, just, just then we would have had to do six other siblings in the family. And the, and, and the chances of him being alone, poss possible as also possibly unlikely. We, we, we just don't know. But if you put the other rumours together about him into that scenario, this starts to sound horribly plausible. Which is, the, which is to the point where, frankly, really, Jimmy stops being an urban myth and an urban document. He starts to basically play the role for real. Like I yeah. can. Like I can. So he started uh, blurring the lines, you're basically saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, yeah. when, 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 when Savile's when told you for real, 
that they, they basically he didn't have a computer in the house. You, you said I wonder would that be because frankly you didn't want to actually be exp- use the internet to basically troll for information as regarding what people know about you. Yeah. Which frankly, on this case, but it was a good idea because the internet was full of people. You had you had information on him, uh, hundreds, maybe thousands. And back then as well, Nez, the the internet was as as regulated as it is now. It was it was the wild west, mate. I remember. It was like, oh, it was, it was like some of those stuff. some of those early forums. I remember seeing were just unfiltered, and yeah. uh, you know, big tech started buying them up and really started you know, putting the uh, you know tightening the screws on them. But I mean, so back you, then, yeah, I mean, you look at Twitter, say for example, two thousand and eight to two thousand and ten. Mm-hmm. It was just like it's just like a Wild West frontier town. It's just like you could just get rid of absolute fucking murder. Now it's gone. I mean, I mean, my Twitter account was my last Twitter account was just close to the Easter, and I just thought to myself, I'm done with it. I'm just fucking done. Um, not, not. I just, I just thought the view that it wasn't conducive to good mental health. No. Probably didn't get madly. No, man. Um, no. Champion yeah, I mean, before I, I, getting off yeah. social media, just get off that in place this is awful yeah yeah I, but again i mean i i just i just see the view that you, you may have theoretically have taken the view that well if i if i get a laptop in the apartment and i basically have broadband installed what i'd be really sure i can't sit to say that i wouldn't be curious about what people know about me or my victims know about me because i might run the risk that i might be curious and i might start going looking and i might start going looking at people who basically really whom I met at Duncroft, at, at Stoke Mandeville, at Jimmy's, at, at um, Hotel Hotel Garen in the Channel Islands, which is, where, which is another reform school where he had a very close relationship. You, you think, maybe. But on the other hand, he could have theoretically been saying, he could have him just for literally, no one's got anything on me, just in, half baked that idea, that no one's got anything on me, just in lieu with the whole idea that, frankly, I don't have a laptop in my apartment. Yeah. So there, but, but again, who, who knows? It's just like Jimmy, would say, Jimmy just waved his crimes in front of your, your nose and just challenged you to basically really see them. And, and, and more often than not, you wouldn't. Yeah. And also the fact was, uh, I think he would have been tipped off by particular people. Look, if you have a laptop or a computer in your house, the police can seize it whenever they oh, want. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, he, was very, he was very specific about the, the Glitter case. Mm-hmm. And the case of Gary Glitter, he got caught by accident because his computer had a problem. He, he took it to the local PC world uh, for repair, and guess what happens then, Gary? Um, the staff in the, the staff in the shop started to go for the hard drive, every file on the hard drive, and look what they found on the hard drives. Next thing you know, he's getting picked up by the police, and it happens that easily. It's just stupid fucking law, and it's just like I can't believe it. it's like it's just like Britain's dumbest criminals. I'm a paedophile. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. Th- I'm literally gonna take my la- laptop to the local PC world, and they're gonna repair it because it's a problem. And next week, I, like um, my pastor suddenly calls up with me. But and the whole problem is, Anthony, as well, that uh, people like Gary Glitter are so narcissistic. They think, "Well, I'm yeah. there. I'm Gary Glitter. It doesn't matter. No one's gonna say nothing. Yeah. They'll just yeah. they'll hand it's, it back, and we didn't see nothing. It's all right, Mister Glitter. Well, yeah, it, look at you I mean, now. It, it, we see it today. We see with just plucking a name at random, Ezra Miller, where they. They've been so encouraged by the woke media, they literally get into their heads that the laws of gravity just don't apply to them. Yeah. It just, it just, it just, they just don't matter. And then all of a sudden they're in jail, and then they discover that the, the laws of gravity really fucking do really apply. But I'm just putting uh, it in there. Yeah, it's very similar as well to Rolf Harris here, who was uh, an acquaintance of Savile's. Um, I think a lot more. I think a lot more than what they made out. I don't think they met yeah. just a couple yeah. of times. Yeah, I mean, Rolf, Rolf, again, another national treasure, another tea cozy. He worked for the BBC for thirty-five years. Uh, people would have heard the rumours. Nobody said anything. Nobody did anything. Turned the other way. Three, three, three monkeys. Um, and ultimately, he ran. A, he ran out of tarmac, and, and his past caught up with him. But yeah, I mean, if you had told people 20, 20 years ago. And I say 20 years ago because he, 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 well, 20 years ago, Rolf Harris did Glastonbury. He performed mm. a, he performed a Glastonbury. Um, that in, in, in 11 years' time, he's going to be charged with multiple counts of historical child sex abuse, and he's going to be going down for seven years at least. People would have just not believed him. No. It's just like, no. It's just like, yeah. He, and, he, and he did. He fucking well should have done. Um, but it's just like, with the perceptions, 
of a public figure was so deeply entrenched, people just can't believe it. It's just that it makes it even more shocking. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's it's because these are your like your crazy uncles that you grew up with. Your lovable uncle, your uncle Jimmy, yeah. your uncle Rolf. Yeah, yeah, when the dark side when the when the other side of the coin flips and you look at the dark side and you think, Holy shit, they did what? Really? Yeah, well, one of the things I I I I find about the London media over the last thirty is that they love labeling people a national treasure. Now, oh god, he's like he's like a like a, like a, like a cozy old warm tea cozy, he's like a pair of carpet slippers. It's like it's like watching fucking four hundred eat a sponge cake on a Sunday night on, on BBC One, and then the national treasures turn out to be villains yeah. or not not sanitary. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, what? but examples. Yeah, there is one uh, national treasure I will not name. Uh, who's who Spence? Was... <laughs> who's Spence? No, let's not name any no. names. No, we're not talking about him. No, um, national. We're talking about British one here. Um, oh, okay. Who uh, they say is pretty entrenched in that culture of the underage culture. No name names. No, no names. Um, <laughs> if you do enough digging around, if you do enough digging around. You'll be able to join the dots and know who I'm talking about. To, 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 it's like it was a it's like charade, just like two words, first word, two syllable. Sounds I, I, like it sounds like I don't need the lawsuit, thank you. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> or I don't need the headache or the, the 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 brass after me. No thanks. But um yeah. There was a place you mentioned, uh, Anthony, called uh Hot de Green. Hot de Green yeah, yeah, in Jersey. Hell, hell. Yeah, the Chal Chal and Jersey and Jersey and Jersey. Um, the only part of the UK that was ever occupied by the Nazis in World War Two. Yeah, uh, they, they did actually make it that far, but nowhere else. Yeah, he, he managed to raise money for Hotel Garen. And uh, next thing you know, Jim Jimmy is very close with the administration at the, at the reform school. And next thing you know, Jimmy's got full access. But you can guess what happens next, and it mm. did. It's it's closed now. It's it's long closed. Um, but but yeah, I mean. It just repeats all fades to be perfect. It's 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 estimated that at the point of his death, Jimmy had full access to over fifty institutions across Britain, maybe more. That's um, staggering. Yeah, yeah. That's he just opened. He, when he wasn't opening doors, he was having doors metaphorically and literally opened for him, and they were happy to do it. There's there's a bit in the documentary where literary journalist journalist Lynn Barber makes makes the point that in the 1970s and 80s, every Fleet Street newspaper editor. Of every national newspaper in Britain took the same view that Jimmy Savile was a paedophile, that Jimmy had a thing about young girls, but because frankly nobody was coming forward and because there was no evidence, you couldn't move because Jimmy was very litigious. You couldn't, yes. you couldn't, you, you couldn't move on under the law. No. Um, and and Lynn, Lynn Barber in his interview, with, in her interview with Jimmy Savile, did ask him, as usual, Jimmy just like, ha 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 ha, ha. puff cigar. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it was really just for attention. Yeah, and it was also uh, also allegedly not just the young girls. It was also the young boys, which I didn't know about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposedly, yeah. he did. I mean, he didn't discriminate. Um, yeah, he had um, had a thing about boys. It, 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 it didn't just have a thing. It, Jimmy was Jimmy was so frank and candid that what he would do was on occasion in an interview he would brag about his relationship with organized crime, and he'd wrap it up in a very very threatening very malicious um ma and, uh, ominous manner yeah and when he wasn't doing that he would often brag about his relationship with the provisional ira which is to say i know i know people in dublin but, and, but again i mean anything in it in, in that regard don't know um but again you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't think anything of it you literally wouldn't think anything of it at all i mean he was he was a profession he he ran a nightclub in leeds um, he, enc he encouraged the idea that basically he had people roughed up on the doors. He was a professional wrestler, mm. um, so he could handle himself. Um, and he, he wasn't he wasn't afraid to basically switch on that particular switch to suggest that frankly you better not ask too many questions if you know what's good for you. But he well, yeah, there was one thing that was in the documentary that was not raised, and that was the fact he had a, a long term partner up until his death, which I didn't know. Well, he, he 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 had a brief relationship with someone, but again, it's, it's from what we gather, it did it didn't last very didn't last didn't last very long. Right. Um, but but again, he was he was a queer he was 
he was a queer old bird to begin with. I mean, during the war, he was too uh, he was too young to be enlisted, but he was too old for evacuation. So what the government, what the, the war office did was they got him a job. What have been routine for teenage boys at the time? Down at the local coal mine. Mm. And Jimmy was a Bevan boy. He went down the mines every morning at 7 a.m. Now, that's that's fine. But Jimmy basically pushed the concept a little bit further because what he would do was turn up every morning wearing a suit and a tie. And he'd literally go down the mine every morning wearing a suit and a tie. Mm. Now, you can imagine, frankly, how, how hard and cold, hard and Yorkshire coal man for the basic you view them. Yeah. Um, they would probably be asked, what, what, what are you doing, Jimmy? And Jimmy was just like, Oh, uh, would give a joke, typical jokey response to basically deflect attention. It's it's kind of in the same way. Saddle would basically when, when when in an interview, he would he would light a cigar when asked a question, he would light a cigar. And the reason he would light a cigar is because it would buy him five to six seconds worth of downtime to, to think for yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like you say, whenever you, you see how Wilson being interviewed as, as Labour leader, he'd smoke a pipe and he knew for one, it, it got me five to six seconds to basically just put an on, basic answer together. It I, just gave me time. I heard the same thing from Groucho Marx, but obviously Groucho was not in the same league. <laughs> I fucking as... hope not. <laughs> no, God, no. Please don't. Not, not Groucho. I don't think so. I seriously doubt it. But he would always say in the um, his book, it would always buy him a few seconds to sit there yeah, and think yeah. about something. And Savile was the same, but only Savile was always running from allegations that would come. You know, they wouldn't be every day, but they would come his way. He'd be like, oh, 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 oh. yes. I, 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 I think, I think, I think the, the first time the Savile started to really fear that the walls were closing in was the Louis Freud documentary when, when Louis met Jimmy. I think, frankly, really, at that point, he started to realize, you know what, I'm coming around the road. I'm going to run a target bit here, to be honest. Mm. Um, he started to get the, I could be wrong, but he's, I get the impression he started to really realize, you know what, I'm, 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 kind, of, I'm kind of on the short ledge here. I'm really on the short ledge. And so, which is to say, he started to insinuate that, frankly, really, um, he had a certain amount of time. Yeah. But that's just a guess. That's just a guess. But for, frankly, that, that that documentary didn't do him any favors. He, he was such a narcissist, he couldn't help but basically just consent to it. When, in fact, really, he, he, he would have put the best forward. Do you know what? Louis Fury was a bit of a bastard here, to be honest, in terms of tough interview. I mean, Louis Fury's style of interviewing is very simple. He basically keeps it on side, give, them, give the subject enough space, and just let them hang themselves. Yeah. That's how he does it. And I've seen him do it before in people, numerous people times. People just fall into the trap over and. It's like the title of the Andrew Denton show, Enough, enough Rope. Yeah, you know, it's just a, exactly. Decide, let them do it, put it together. And, if, and and that's even on the basis that the editing and post-production is slanted. I don't, I don't, I don't think Louis Fury does that at all. I think he just basically just um, just keeps them on side and just gives them the, gives them the platform. Yeah. But I think with hindsight, he would be best advice just to stay clear of it. Because if he, just, he just didn't come out of that, that one at all whatsoever. No, no, no. And Thoreau even said about the fact that he... He wishes he had gone a bit further with Savile yeah. and, and yeah. really yeah. pressed him. Well, again, I mean, Louis Fru would, 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 would have heard BBC guy, um, would have heard would have, would have heard the rumours, but he, but he makes the point in his autobiography. Just, I just wanted to get, when it was over, I just wanted to get the fuck away from him. Yeah. Just, I, could, I, could, I couldn't get away quickly enough from him. Um, I, I suspect he wouldn't have been alone. No. And that, that leads us to the fact that, that Savile was from what I can garner from this documentary and, and other things that I've been watching was so revered that even girls would just scream at this guy, this really unattractive guy. Yeah. He, cause it, it was the, the case of the guy who said, I know I ain't <laughs> got the looks. I don't have the, I'm not the Paul McCartney's and the Mick Jaggers of this world with the good looks. And, um, uh, girls scream at me, groupies throw themselves at me. I'm going to use this to my advantage. And the yeah, problem well, was he the- went so far. Over the ledge of decency. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things you'll find with radio one DJs at the time, from the late sixties onwards, is the line began to be blurred between DJs and the various pop and rock stars that basically really they were basically opening gigs for and just like 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 introducing. It's just that like the the line just between the two became blurred, and Savile blurred it. He yeah. really blurred it. We were like. There's Jimmy with the Beatles. There's Jimmy with Elvis. There's Jimmy with Chuck Berry. There's Jimmy with Abba, and it's just like, and it just, and it doesn't surprise you at all. The lines, the line between the two has just become where Radio One presenters in the sixties and seventies just wasn't so. Where it was biggest the pop stars that were playing every day. Yeah. Where it was just, it just things. There's, there's, a, there's a bit in the, the, the BBC documentary I, I 
simple interview for on Friday where John Peel made the point that in disrespect to Tony Blackburn, mm. where Tony Blackburn's head was so up his own ass that he generally thought he was actually a pop star, when in fact all he was doing was basically playing the role of a DJ, playing the bloody records, and to the point where he just thought he can't tell the difference. No. It was just it was just absolutely blurred, and and it and it was. He thinks of that screaming that he's hit, that he's hearing for the Beatles, for the Stones, for the Kinks. It was yeah. for him, but it's for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like, okay, Jimmy, like you've introduced the Rolling Stones, like get off. And it's like, yeah. no, I'm not getting off. And, yeah. and you're gonna have to fucking throw me off. Um, he just wouldn't get off the stage. That's how he was. I mean, Fatcher, Fat, Michael Fatcher, absolutely would, would feel it. Um, yeah, we we're going to get into that that thing about his relationship with Thatcher, um, and his his OBE he received. The question I wanted to ask you was: Can an individual have their knighthood stripped from them, even posthumously? No, no I mean cons- constitutional law states that a knighthood dies with the recipients. So okay. his, his 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 knighthood basically passed away with him in October two thousand eleven. But yeah, I mean once one. Once, once the floodgates, Jimmy's Jimmy Savile's death was a form of release because for the first time people could just literally en masse just come forward. He was dead. What was he going to do? Well, nothing. And his death was their freedom because then he starts to come forward. Next thing you know, name place names are being removed. Um, charities are having their names changed. Um, bursaries are basically handed back, mm-hmm. and the whole process of just disestablishing themselves from him just happened very very quickly indeed but yeah i mean it's just it's just a case of the in in in, in death the, in in his death they are now free no no no, no question about it but mm-hmm. it's a scene that frankly it took that took that long um i i couldn't begin to imagine if he were basically alive in 2012 13 if he was charged how many charges he would have picked up I couldn't begin to imagine. Wouldn't there be still be this fear about the fact that Sable was such a populist figure, that popular figure, that he wouldn't be, people would still be scared to come after him? They had to wait, literally wait till the guy was dead to say, right, yeah. now we can say something because he's gone. He can't yeah. do anything yeah. to us. Yeah. The, 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 I, was, I was drawn to the clips in the documentary where he was being interviewed by Surrey Police and he was as defensive as it got. He sounded scared. Yeah. He had a skirt. He sounded absolutely, absolutely concerned. He was taking it deadly seriously. Um, I think he knew that, frankly. And this, I mean, it, it, I think it was basically just, just after this. No, no just, just after the the, the food documentary, um, where he was pulling my sorry police. But it, but the, the the impression I got from those clips was that, frankly, he was a very worried man for the first time. He was a very worried man. He was he was defensive. Mm. He it, it was like oh. Um, I'm just. I'll be just having a laugh here. This is a little bit of fun. Here's a joke here and there, and I'm just being being prevaricated. No, he was really defensive. He sounded scared. Mm. He sounded angry. Um, yeah, he, was, he, took, he took it deadly seriously. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. So um, that was my point. Was just people I think scared to say something. Sure. Yeah. But um. Another thing as well I wanted to bring up was the the Thatcher thing where she was uh, very vehement about the fact she wanted Jimmy Savile knighted. What do we, what yeah, do we know about yeah. the fact that... Because uh, Savile didn't come across as a very political person. Oh, well, he was a, he was a, to- he was a toy. He was, he made, on the, it, was, it was only really a broad place by somebody else, in which case he would have said, yeah, I, I think Margaret Thatcher's absolutely like a girl for me. Um, and but he would only really bring it up if it was actually brought up by somebody else. But um, Margaret Thatcher from 1980 wanted an OBE for Savile, and he got one. It was only when years later that she wanted a, a knighthood for Thatcher that the, cab, the, the, the head of the cabinet, the cabinet secretary, head of the cabinet officer, Robin Butler, made it very clear that Frankie Whitehall didn't regard it as a good idea, and they would openly d- discourage it from go- going anywhere near the idea. And it came up a couple of times between 1983 and 1990. When Margaret Thatcher resigned in November 1990, they had to give it to, they had to give it to them. The reason being that when a prime minister be constitutional law states, that when a prime minister basically leaves office, they get the chance to put together a list of public figures and private figures whom they would like to basically bestow awards upon, OBEs, MBEs, NATOs, yeah. whatever. At the top of the list was Jimmy Savile, and it was it was a prime minister, and that being prime minister's prerogative, um, they had the right to do it. 
and they went before the civil servants, the civil service, and they had no choice but to rubber stamp it. And there's just no comeback. They couldn't stop it at all whatsoever. Right. And Jimmy got his civil, Jimmy Savile got his knighthood in 1991. And they, there's literally nothing in the way the civil service of White was just furious because there's just nothing they could do about it. Um, but she was very happy with it. She, as far as she was like, I, I got the chance to give him what I wanted to give him all along. Um, but yeah, well, I bet yeah, she but regrets could... that one in her days. Well, well she... you know, yeah, the old, the old, the old birds suffer from Alzheimer's in, in the final seven years. So, frankly, she's probably just forgotten about it, probably, yeah. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, getting to some more of the crimes that, uh, Savile did. And there, there were a lot. There was the um, oh, what was the one about the 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 raping of the twins, the 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 two black girls in the documentary. Yeah, yeah, the, the, their case their case goes back years. Uh, there were two black black children, um, in Bro- in Broad in, in Broadmoor, mm-hmm. uh, and they took a vow of silence. They wouldn't talk to anybody. Um, the, 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 psych- the clinical staff was just baffled. And all, all of a sudden, along comes Jimmy, and um, Jimmy gets involved. You can guess how that one went. Um, but they only, they, 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 they only spoke to one. They only spoke to two people. One was Marjorie Wallace, the, the journalist who, who managed to gain the trust, and several. But Marjorie Wallace was under no illusions. Just like I'm not sure this is really good. It's because I had to be perfect for Jimmy getting the in kids. Yeah. Um, yeah but, but again, it's just like. Whatever Marjorie Wallace felt, just like, I haven't got anything on it. I haven't got anything on him and the two patients involved, and I, and I can't, I can't, I can't move it. And and Jimmy again, very litigious, knew it. He knew what, she, she just used, used it against his, well, he used it against his victims, but also those who frankly did not be too close, of which there were many. Um, well, you you would see in some of the interviews he was having with the female uh, interviewers and the hosts, he was just as brazen as all hell. He's like, yeah, come yeah, over yeah. Here. yeah. The Salinas, the, the, the that's Salinas. the one I was alluding to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, okay, okay, it goes without saying that Salinas got Salinas Scott was probably in the early 80s, but she 80s is very good, very good at the job. But also, she, she my place, right time, she bore an uncanny resemblance to Diana Princess of Wales. Mm. She and she did, like, yeah. And, and and Jimmy, Jimmy never wanted to discriminate, put his fourth forward every time he was in Whiteland's BBC breakfast time of a weekday morning. The Selena Scott and Frank Boff, and he just ignored Frank Boff. And Frank Boff might as well just not even yeah. been there. It's yeah. just like it's, just, it's almost like Jimmy was basically itching to tell, tell Frank Boff, it's just like, geez, Frank, could you probably go to go to the cafeteria for a couple yeah, of minutes? Go get something to eat, piss off. <laughs> yeah. It's like the, the park, park my car. It's just like, and he would he would go with me, try it on, and she made the best of a bad situation. And she would have basically heard the rumors at the same at the same time as well. So frankly, there was a certain amount of fear. Um, my one, my good lot. Last, last time I saw her, I think the source, I haven't been on television for 30 years. Last time, it's just nothing. But she was being interviewed, she was given her own documentary series by ITV, and she, and she interviewed Donald Trump. Mm. And she gave him a hard, t- tough, tough time as usual, and he complained about it. And he, how can I put this? Trump placed upon her head one of his infamous curses, which is to say, she'll never work in. Fucking television ever again, and I'll fucking. Bro- and the funny thing is, she, a, a documentary series was cancelled after one season, and she was never seen in television for a so She was gone. Shit. And always when you think that's that's the it's like the trunk curse is kind of Damien Omen too. Those who cross them do not prosper. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But um, it it seemed to me as well that a lot of the, f- and I'm not trying to take gender sides here. I mean, you know, nothing sure. like that. But the women in this seem to be a lot more cluey. They'll be on the Savile a bit more than what the guys were. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I don't think they, I don't think they need to be told. Um, I think women are very good at picking up the type of thing to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Um, it's, I think they're, they're inter- I think their internal radar is just better. Truth be, truth be told. Um, yeah, yeah. But but again, that's, that's one of the reasons why he went. To, he favoured children more so than than, than 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 adult women because it's just like they haven't got that radar. No. It's just it was just like to, uh, a cruel irony that basically the documentary makes very clear that um, Jimmy wrote the introduction to um, a book on Stranger Danger. Oh, yes. He yeah. wrote it on Stranger Danger. Talk about it, fucking ironic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he would, he would, he would pop up on public seat. He would occasionally pop up on public safety commercials as regarding, have you learned to swim yet? Or you want to learn to swim? Or, or are you. 
are you basically um, on your own tonight? Well, well do you know, do, do you know your, you know your parents? It's like, it's like fat, fat is public safety commercials. It's just like, you didn't think anything of it. Just, no. just nothing at all. No. Um, just, just, just to illustrate the point, I mean, I am clueless the BBC actually is. Still to this day, when he died, the BBC announced they were going to have a tribute, a tribute even to Jimmy Savile. And it was going to form the basis of the Christmas... Uh, uh, the Christmas schedules of, of, of BBC Two, they were going to devote an entire night to the life and career of Jimmy Savile. And at which point, when the outcry started, the BBC just knuckled, and, knuckled down, dug in their heels, and they went ahead and they did it. They just absolutely did it. Um, and and the, the BBC's official position at the time was that there was no official records in any way, shape or form of Jimmy Savile having... Um, to perform any allegations as regarding illegality on BBC premises, and that, that just goes it, go, it goes with the BBC over and over and over again. Um, the exposure documentary, which went out the year, a year later, um, tried tried gaining information as regarding several. Several had a, 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 the, for a brief period he had a, a program on Saturday evening on BBC Radio Leeds called Speakeasy, where guests were basically brought in. Hmm. Um, there was one eyewitness at the time, this is 1978, who caught him in his dressing room having sex with a 14-year-old girl. I mean, he had his tongue down her throat, and she was in his lap. And she was so terrified, and she couldn't actually um, refer to it in any way, shape, or form. But for the, the, the evidence, evidence of exposure, she had, she had a date, the time and date, September 1978. And the, investiga the, the investigation team, the documentary, got in touch with the BBC, BBC, BBC in Leeds, to ask if they actually had existing records for September, the speakeasy, September 1978, just to see which you popped up on the show or who mm. worked on the show at the time. All records, all records have been destroyed. Nothing there. Just, you, you couldn't, I mean, what records they would have had, they, they simply said no. So again, you, you're just getting this impression of this, like, it, it's well, just the BBC what the BBC always does. There was a lady that was on the documentary that we, we watched and uh, I'm, I'm sure it was that one because I'm starting to because uh, I watched a couple more after that I'm starting sure. to think it was well, that one and there was a lady who swore up and down that Savile um, sexually assaulted her on a show called Click Clunk yeah, Click yeah, yeah, Clunk? Clunk, yeah. Uh, Clunk 76 Clunk. right right um, and they went back and they tried to find the footage and they couldn't find nothing the BBC had not archived stuff but they found the footage Eventually, they found the lady, the the young girl yeah. at the time. Yeah, and they, that was the basis for them to go along and you know follow the trail of uh, Savile's destruction over the decades. So it's um it sort of really opened the floodgates for others to say, well, see me there on top of the pops in '73. This is what he did afterwards, and you know some of the exchanges he had with Gary Glitter on there were just fucking creepy. Oz, Oz. I mean, at the time they would have been just like. Not, nothing, nothing in it. Nothing. In it. No. But just, just want to say the point. The BBC only formally apologised a year later in two thousand October two thousand twelve, where they actually openly admitted for the first time that we we screwed up. Um, we, we don't know what to say. It's just, and it's, it's, it's all, well, how about paying a fucking compensation for the victims, of which frankly there would have been many, because frankly, really, for the BBC to go from twelve in twelve the cost of twelve months from saying we have. We have no evidence to suggest that anything actually happened. So actually saying, well, actually, really, it, it did all happen, and the allegations are true. That's, even, that's some jump. Even that's though, some jump. even though John Lydon, back when he was Johnny Rotten in '78, yeah, yeah. told them, yeah, you know, they just I they mean, banned him. They banned him. I said, yeah, they, no they, thanks. They, yeah, they gave an interview to BBC Radio One in '77, and John Lydon basically made it very clear that frankly, we've heard the rumours. How come you haven't heard the rumours? Uh, I bet you wish that, frankly, you could do something about certain people who work at Radio One mm. um, because we had the rumors. And that particular section of that particular interview was cut. Yeah, frankly, it was frankly it was saved because it could have easily just to be just as easily been wiped as lost. Mm. So they knew, and and the whole yeah. thing, the whole ironic thing is, Anthony. Now I looked up here just before there was a BBC uh, miniseries coming out about Savile. This year, called the reckoning, with um, yeah, Steve Coogan. Uh, what's this fellow's name? Steve Coogan. Steve, that's it. Yes, Steve Coogan. Steve Coogan. Sorry, uh, playing Jimmy Savile. 
So it's taken them eleven years. What to what to what? It's it's too late now. Yeah, yeah, Pretty, yeah. And what are they going to do? Oh, seriously, Niz, what are they going to do? What what are they going to show that's going to um, well, what, implicate what, what their company of this what, what guy? They what, what they can show is what they can't show, which is to say the whole thing is just a complete point. I just thought when when, when, when that story broke, I just was I just thought it was that's exploitation. Yeah, that, that's just that's like exploitation tax taxpayers' money. It's just like, gee, it's just like, you know, you know, um, yeah. It's just like I think I think Jimmy would have been amused to be honest. Ah, say say what they're doing now. I've got me on two part. I mean, this is me. I'm I'm a lucky. I'm a lad. Yeah, yeah, Sally. Um, but yeah, it, it, I, I think that's just exploitation, to be honest. I mean, it's just, I mean, even, even, even for me, Mr. Bad Taste, it's mm. just like, that's a, that's, 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 that's a bit of a spoonful. What is the um, point? The whole, the whole thing is, what is the point now? What is the point? Yeah. You know, I mean, if it, was Netflix, if it was Netflix that was actually making it, you think to suffer okay, you wouldn't be surprised, but it's the BBC, the organisation, I kind of... Exactly. It's the, it's the organisation <laughs> that was complicit in this whole thing for decades... Making this, it's not a two-part miniseries made by an independent body or an independent filmmaker saying we don't care about the the um, ramifications of what the BBC do to us. We're still going to make this thing, and we'll get it out there some by by hook or by crook. This is the fucking BBC saying no. we we <clears throat> uh, sheltered Jimmy Savile for decades, and now we're going to make a fucking two-part series about him. Yeah, I mean, it's not like the victims are going to be watching it. I mean, I just don't see the point. Yeah. It's basically like, uh, you know, it's like robbing a bank and then paying the police out of your own pocket to fund out who the fucking criminals were. What's, <laughs> what's yeah, the point? Yeah. Well, well, Jimmy had a very close relationship with Yorkshire police, West Yorkshire Police, uh, which is just basically one of those corrupt constabularies in England. It's just bent. Um, his Friday, his Friday morning clubs were just basically um, an excuse for Jimmy to basically consult with his mates in the in in in, 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 in CID. Uh, and should by chance um, Jimmy have a complaint uh, from one of his victims, he'd basically have a word with his mates on a Friday morning, and they would say, "No problem, Jimmy. No, make that problem go away." And they did. They made they made they made Jimmy's problems go away when Jimmy's problems came up. Uh, which is to say, they, um, there, there was this is, this is a sequence in the, the second part of the document where somebody somebody raised a complaint to a police establishment somewhere else down south, and they raised the issue. They yep. send it to West Yorkshire Police, at which one they just bury it, and they wouldn't have been the only one. So Jimmy's Friday mornings, Friday morning club, um, really, really protected this backside, really covered it. Um, mm. Smart guy, you've got to be, you've got to be so Machiavellian, so cynical to come up with a ploy like that. Whereby I've got I've got a number of detectives in such the palm of my hand, where frankly, um, if if I get into trouble, they'll bail me out, and, and and sadly they did. But with crimes as heinous as his, Anthony, you had to be he had to be one step ahead of everybody, always. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. misstep just, and you are gone, friend. Yeah. I mean, just to illustrate the point, West Yorkshire Police, um, they apologised. They had an internal investigation of Jimmy Savile's death, and they only really found that officers had mishandled complaints. So they, 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 they found that officers didn't mishandle complaints, but that only that um, evidence and intelligence was mishandled. That there was no mis, which is to say, there was no misconduct. Only mm -hmm. that the, that mi in intelligence was just mishandled, but nothing else. Um, and that was that was his nearest an apology that West Yorkshire Police um, ever gave. And it's, it's funny you should say that because West Yorkshire Police were in a bit of a problem at this moment in time because they didn't just turn a blind eye to that; they turned a blind eye. The Muslim, the Muslim immigrant community in Rotherham, you can mm -hmm. you can Google this, mass raping 1,400 children over 30 years in Rotherham. And the, and, the, and the constabulary didn't get involved. They called the victims racists. They called the victims slags. They called the victims prostitutes. And they just called them slappers. And the whole thing was just covered up whereby it, it was discovered that 1,400 victims had come forward to make complaints about the, a, a certain ethnic immigrant community that basically they they conspired to protect because they didn't want to be accused of being racist. Um, yeah. So they so it's not just the the victims of Savile they're paying out and uh, they're going to be paying out an awful lot more. But it, West Yorkshire Police has a reputation of being one of the most corrupt, most incompetent establishments in England. It's just 
just fucking bent. Mm. Bent. Absolutely bent. Nothing you can do with it. No still. You hear, that, you hear that sound, Anthony? Well, <laughs> That's the West Yorkshire oh, police on your front door. <laughs> oh, 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 well, what, what, what happened to me last year was just like something else. But I would, oh, I would, no. I would, but yeah, I mean, they, they, they literally just covered, in, in the name of multiculturalism and good racial manners, they covered up the crimes for over 30 years. And the Muslims just thought, we can do what we want. And the problem was that they then, they then did, oh, by the way, this, this is happening all over Britain. It's not just Rotherham. It's other places besides where in the London media, there was such a taboo about it. You couldn't mention it until now because the victims, after the somebody said after Savile, the victims started coming forward. And you can't criticize the victims. This is before, it's something we did me too, it's way before that, where you couldn't criticize the victims because what are you going to do? Gaslight them? It's just like, mm. they're just going to, we're going to call them liars. It's just like, okay, frankly, somebody's innocent or proven guilty if charges are brought. Mm. Um, but that's it. This is like the thing. You had woke CRGT feminists in a bit of a pickle because it's like, well, we like the Muslims and we like feminism, but we like the victims. And we probably like the victims more so because, frankly, these, these are the people that we're meant to be fighting for and representing. And if through liberal, it, it still throws liberalism into a, into a pickle with us. And it's like, we want to support one and the other, but we can't support both because they're just incompatible. Two, just two different things, and it throws them. It absolutely throws them. Sorry about yeah. that. Sorry. It's all right. Tangents, uh, you know, are yeah, quite, yeah, quite yeah. common here anyway. But um, yeah, look, let's um, let's get into the sort of tail end of this thing with Savile now, because um, okay. there's there's so much to unpack. There's no way we could do it in an hour and a half. Um, sure. it, just the the thing that that got me was just the outpouring of emotion for this guy when he died. Yeah. It seemed like the whole. The whole country was in mourning for this this fellow who, yeah, yeah, who fucking yeah. hood he hoodwinked the whole the whole country. Yeah, yeah he just he just screwed it. He, he literally screwed the nation, not metaphorically. Yeah. He literally screwed us, screwed me. Yeah. Um, suddenly people had it worse. Um, but I, 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 again, it's just like it's like you look at the way that the London media employed him, defended him, platformed him, just just. They gave him everything that he ever wanted, and he just ran riot. And you just think to yourself, no wonder people don't read national newspapers anymore. No people, no wonder people just don't watch the BBC anymore. It's just like so, that, that's what it's gone. So, so who's at fault? Is it Savile, the London, or the British media, or both, for or creating both? Both. 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 Jimmy was only doing what was expected of him. That that was just Jimmy. That was just Jimmy's nature. Um, but it was just like. It, they, they they love a national treasure. They love a national icon. It's, it's like the way the way that they. I'm plucking a name at random here because there's so many. Let's say the way that they treat Helen Mirren is this national institution, this national tea code, this national icon. It's just exactly the way that they treated Jimmy Savile. Mm -hmm. But the other it's like you see the way they treat Evan. Plucking names at random. Stephen Fry or Lenny Han. It's just like the same thing. It's just like. Oh, yeah. gosh, 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 gosh. Yeah. And you can't question them. You can't criticise them. We, we saw an element of it in, in the pandemic of, of the two-year two, two year window where you couldn't criticise Tom Moore. You couldn't criticise his relatives. You couldn't criticise his charity. You couldn't criticise people who decided to put at 7 p.m. of a Thursday evening bang saucepans and pots in tribute to the NHS. You couldn't criticise the NHS. Um, you couldn't criticize. You couldn't criticize the government because the government was just jolly well trying its best. Um, you couldn't criticize people who decided to put pictures of rainbows in their front windows in tribute to the NHS. And it's just like you couldn't literally criticize anything. And now that we're moving gradually away from it, it's all starting to look and sound really silly. And that's subtle. With hindsight, mm -hmm. it, it, it it looked and sounded silly, but not at the time. You couldn't you couldn't criticize it, as indeed nobody did. Just just nobody. You didn't criticize him. You would have been just like, no, you're just letting the side down. It's just like he's a jolly good egg. He's just like a jolly good chap and he's trying his best. And you know, he, he he's done a lot for charity. You couldn't criticize him because he did a hell of a lot for that charity. That is that's what it all comes back to in the end, Anthony, is the fact that he did so much for charity. People who didn't don't realise it uh, about Jimmy Savile, he wasn't that well known here. He was he was seen, obviously not like it was in, in Britain, nowhere near to the effect. But we knew the name, we knew the face, obviously. But when you found out how much money he'd raised, it was staggering. It was not 
a couple of hundred thousand pounds. This was millions and tens of millions of pounds he's raised. Well, if, if, if Jim Sellers was on a charity fundraiser and he moves a bucket in under your nose and he asks you to donate money, well, it'll be a brave soul that says, do you know what, Jimmy, I, 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 for whatever reason, I'm not going to give. Yeah. It's just like you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't say no. It's, it's just like it's just like you were not allowed to say no. It's just like Jimmy, Jimmy and the London media just wouldn't, wouldn't basically hear it because it's just like you heartless and caring. What will happen is that you get gaslit. You heartless and caring, feeling bastard. It's like how dare you? It's, Jimmy wants your money for Stoke Mandeville. Yeah. Jimmy wants your money for Broadmoor. Jimmy wants your money for Dunkroft or Hotel Le Guerin. And it's just like you better give the money if you know what's good for you. It was almost threatening to yeah. be honest with Heinz. It was just time. Like, one step away from the uh, collection plate, the church. They're obviously not like that. I mean, you, you give yeah, or you don't yeah. give, but yeah. Well, the church, in, 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 in a mass, it's just like when, when, when the patch comes, it's just like, okay, you just say, be your name. That's it. You don't get gas. It's, it's no. Like, you don't get gas. It's just like, okay, not, not, not this week. Okay, whatever. And that, that's fine. That's as far as it goes. But this this was just like something else. This is just like a, like a cult of personality that was running wyatt. Um, sounds, sounds like a place that Tom Cruise is affiliated with. Oh, I couldn't imagine which which particular church that is. Yeah, I don't um, know, but you, yeah, it's yeah. Not, honestly, no. honestly, it's 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 news to me. Yeah, and the only thing that's, that's that particular organization um, above the waterline is the fact that he's still in it. Yeah, um, it. I, 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 I do wonder just how long he's going to basically stay in it. To be honest, then again, till I mean, till thought, the end I, I, till the end of days, mate. Because the fact is. He is, he he is basically, in terms of reverence, Jimmy Savile like. I'm t- not talking about his yeah. personality or his, you know, sexual demeanor. I'm talking about as in how much he's revered. He's yeah. basically godlike. He's yeah. up there with, uh, you know, the guy who ran the free wind ship. He's in the same level of reverence uh, uh, as that. Yeah, Captain, Captain Ron. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> He could have abused his own children as well, but that's another story altogether. Exactly, yeah. Um, but so when you have everything done for you, when you basically say, uh, in seven days, I want a house built in um, uh, Alaska, make it happen, yeah. and it's done. Yeah. yeah you, Tell you, me you're going to leave that. You're making him sound like old Martin Bourne. It's like, I want, this done, I want this built in seven days, otherwise. You're out. Yeah, um, basically. Yeah, it's just like, going to deny him? No yeah. one, nobody. Yeah. So, and and we'll get back to Savile about the fact that he, how much money he raised. It was really frustrating watching this because I thought, well, on one on one side of the coin, here's a guy who raised so much and was really you, you felt his his heart was in it as a good man who said, I saw all these people with spinal injuries at Stoke Mandeville. I want to give them this whole new premises that they can live in. And then you, then you look at the crime, you think, fucking hell, you've got to be kidding me. How yeah. can someone live this double life? It's insane. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I there's one documentary I saw last week where a clinical psychologist made the point that Jimmy Savile had two faces. And I just thought to myself, I'm not a clinical psychologist, but I just couldn't agree more. I think, he, I think Jimmy Savile had one face, and for him, there was no distinction between public and private persona. It was just one, one canvas... It was all very messy, and somehow he, he managed to juggle the balls in the air and keep everything separate altogether. But it was just, just this, this one, I think it's just one face. It's just like he did, again, it brings me back to the original point at the beginning. I think he was altruistic. I think he generally believed in it. I think he generally believed in the idea of raising millions. I think he generally believed in the idea of doing good. Mm-hmm. But I also think that it just consequently allowed him to get his foot in the door. Yeah, and that's the worst part because so many people benefited from. Yeah. His his fundraising, his generosity, the money he was putting in himself as well. He was putting in money out of his own pocket, and it, the money is tainted because it's coming from this this individual. But these people are having a better quality of life. So, the the two sides of this personality, it goes from one extreme to the other. Yeah. You know, there's real no middle road in there. It's just. Yeah, the one side of the, the, the do-gooding human being who wants to raise this money and give the people of Britain a better life, and he's this fucking monster on the other side. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering, was it, was, is, is there actually, I'm guessing probably will, but I'm just wondering if there's actually an Australian equivalent or somebody who gets close to Savile in terms of Australian popular culture over the last 40, 50 years. Probably, guess, Rolf, well, probably Rolf Harris, but he, I don't think he did the crimes as bad as Savile or as no. many. Uh, no. Yes, he's been incarcerated 
Uh, I don't know if he's still in prison. I think he is. Oh, he's out. He's out now. Oh, he's out now. Okay. But um, he committed the same sort of crime or similar crimes. I don't think he did ones as bad, i.e. the necrophilia, the no. the children as young as what Savile was allegedly doing, um, and, some, and collecting the glass eyeballs, just some of the really twisted, sick stuff. But basically when Rolf Harris was... Um, exposed and then um, incarcerated. I believe he's from Western Australia and every piece of um, dedicated area in Rolf Harris Way, you know, placards, gone. Ripped up, removed. Just basically, they said they want every trace of Rolf Harris and any affiliation with not just Western Australia, but Australia alone, just gone. Fucking yeah. take him. We don't want him. So, no, 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 no wonder. Yeah. But so, he, only did like, he only did like four or five years. He should, he should have done far longer. But that's. But I think he probably got on the basis of, of age, health. Age. And, 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 and totally was his age. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, look, this, this documentary is a tough watch. I would recommend it. Uh, part two is a lot more savage yeah. in, in terms of what comes across in Savile's uh, you know, personality and his crimes. But you you do need to see part one to get part two, to understand part yeah. two. I mean, one, does, one doesn't make sense without the other. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, there are some other ones out there which I would suggest you go on to YouTube. Um, yeah, at. yeah, the, 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 the exposure documentary on that from ICV is very good. Uh, crimes, mm. Faking, Faking gets very good. Um, that's from Discovery Plus. It's on YouTube. Um, crimes is still written. Yeah, yeah, there's 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 quite a lot to choose from. Should you want to should you want to go in that direction? Yeah, that, uh, I can't I can't really say I recommend it. But... No, no, but I mean, if you want to go down the rabbit hole of uh, Jimmy Savile to find out just how depraved one human being can be, you know, the uh, the the two sides of of a man, you know, of a, of a person who can be this Peter Pan type of person. You know, Anthony, it reminds me of. Michael Jackson. Okay, Michael Jackson, we still don't know if he was ever... No. No. Okay, that documentary, that two-parter, turns out those two young men were lying. It was all concocted. Yeah. Um, well, it, it, it reminds me of the old... The old you, you hear feminists and wokers say, um, oh, in respect to me too, oh, it, it takes a lot of courage for someone to basically come forward and make allegations. Well, that on the one hand, yes, that is true, but on the other hand, it takes a lot of moral, moral courage for someone to basically lie and make a public a public allegation, which isn't true, and which yeah. is no uh, yeah. So it, it, it swings both ways. And and that's why the the Me Too movement has sort of uh, garnered a shit stain. It's but, it's garnered yeah. a shit stain. It it was a really a movement that was genuine. Okay, it it, it started I, I, as a I, genuine I, I, movement. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it was genuine, but I also think at the same time it was just completely half baked. Because what we're saying is, literally every allegation has to be believed. So, if a person is charged, they still believe in the idea that the person is guilty until innocent. Yeah, it's the other. It's like they, they, they literally they practice the free card trick, and they switch that around, and you couldn't, and, and you got gaslit if you got anywhere near the idea of any objectivity in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. You yeah. couldn't criticize it. Now it's different because it's just like. It, it got exposed very quickly. The um, the Amber Heard trial, Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial thing threw it on its ear. Yeah, her victory is gone. Um, yeah. I, I don't know what she's going to launch an appeal, but I wish, wish all the person would because um, he, she is just... She, Michael, what, what a position for her to be in. She, she's, un, she's now unemployable. She's lost Aquaman 2 and she still has 13 billion dollars and she still has to basically pay her own legal side legal team as well. Yeah. And it's just... Best, best of luck. No... <laughs> No, uh, no actor will go near. No male actor will go near. Whereas, yeah, whereas, yeah. Disney's now planning for Johnny Depp to come back to Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean. No surprise. Interesting to see if he does, mate. I tell you, he may just say, you know what, fuck it. I don't, I yeah. don't need yeah. the money that bad. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, God, little almost. It's just like, I mean, no, the, 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 the God, you look at you look at the studio season and strength. No, it's no wonder they're just burning. They're just literally burning down. I and mean, you look at you look at Disney at this moment in time. It's just like. I wouldn't. I want to be. I just wouldn't want to be a shareholder in that company. No. That's just like gone, absolutely gone. Uh, and and they, 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 as as 
befits any good true work CRG team, the more they want to attack, the more they knuckle down, and the more they just lose and just hemorrhage money. I mean, and Warner Brothers are stuck with a two hundred million dollar film yeah. the next year starring Ezra Miller, and he's now in, he's 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 now arrested. Mm-hmm. He's probably going down, and the two hundred million dollars that just spent on, on on the film version of the Flash that's gone. You, you can't put him. You, you can't put. You can't put him on. You're not, you're not going to be able to put him on a press junket. No. And frankly, you're probably not going to be able to have a press junket because no. it's just just the nature of the allegations. Because the all all the um, all the swirl of uh, news surrounding it will be regarding Ezra Miller. That's it. Yeah. And yeah. the crimes. So. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. It would, it would be someone with a hard heart to be paid perfectly good money to see that film. Let's put, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, Michael, I. I, I Contemplate it, fucking hell. God, no. Oh, I like God. The Flash. I was actually a bit of a fan of The Flash. Yeah. I like the old yeah. series from the 90s. Um, what was it 90, 91 that series came out? Yeah, yeah. Amanda, yeah. Amanda Pace. That's it. Yeah, like that one quite a bit. And um, the television series and later in the 2000s and 16, 17. Eh, you know, not so much. That's another, thing. That's another shit on CW. It's just been sold for zero cents. <laughs> and the, they, they, found, they, didn't have, they found the bus, the CW, Discovery Warner found the buyer for the CW, but they had to give away the company for literally zero cents. Oh, by the way, the, the buyer has just inherited a debt of over $100 million that the, that, that, that the CW ran up over the last five years. They literally, they poured, they burnt money in pursuit of, of work CRGT and nobody turned up. But again, the more the people rejected it, the more that they would double down to the point where after three seasons of I know, Batwoman, they've got nothing. They literally had no ratings. It had gone. And they just ran for hundreds of millions of dollars of debt. Hey, Anthony, how true does the phrase go woke, go yeah, yeah. broke? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have, I mean, you have, I don't know what Twitter's like like now, but I would imagine, frankly, it's like hand to hand combat because you've got woke, wokes representing Disney, uh, Marvel, DC and a couple of others, and and frankly, they they just basically been surrounded now by fans who've just seen enough. We've just had enough. But Buzz 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 yelled Bond three weeks ago. Um, yeah, they, they they decided that what we're going to do is make children's program uh, that 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 was nothing more than, than sexualized content for children, and it died. And next thing you know, the works are working go overtime to go around the houses to basically see it wasn't actually to do that; it was to do with something else. And you always find that when the one film bonds. They'll base, the left will circle the wagons to look for absolutely any excuse as to why it bombed. And it's just like, no, it's not for the reason that it is, but it keeps, it keeps happening. Yeah. Um, one, one of my kids, uh, one of my sons, went to the movies the other day. I didn't know what he was watching. He goes, Dad, can you drop me off here? I'm going to go meet up some friends and go to the movies. I said, okay. And um, didn't bother asking because I dropped him off and I had to keep moving. Saw him later that night. I said, oh, what did you watch? He goes... Um, Jesus, what was he watched? I can't remember. But I said to him, oh, did you go watch uh, Buzz Lightyear? He goes, nah, too woke. No thanks. Well, well why do you woke too woke, to be honest? <laughs> this, is, this is a teenage boy who knows this. You know? He's... Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're getting played. It's yeah. actually getting played. Yeah. So, um, I mean, when, when Elvis, just to watch the point, Elvis Bond, Baz Luhrmann's Elvis Bond at the box office, but I, it, it has actually nothing to do with work. It's just, it was just to do with the fact that it's a Baz Luhrmann film and it's not very good. No, it's, just, it's, it's not. not. I mean, and, Baz and Luhrmann's like, it's like, his film is just like the work of somebody who is obsessed by the idea of swinging as much caffeine as possible for the course of the, the, course of the day, being yeah. absolutely sugared with, ca- with the caffeine, and then throwing absolutely everything at the wall to just see what the hell actually sticks. And next thing you know, you've got Elvis. Yeah. Because that's just the same as every other film is made. Yeah, it's just too much. It's, it's, it's like, Moulin it's like, Rouge, strictly ballroom, Romeo and Juliet. I mean, no, I don't care aesthetically for his look and his style. Um, he may be talented. I, I don't really know. I saw one of his films. And I just, I, I saw uh, Moulin Rouge, and I fucking hated it. I thought this is yeah, just I haven't awful. seen it. I mean, awful. it's 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 something. It's something. Like, I used I used to think he was. I used to think, oh, he's just camp gay, so therefore there's that sensibility. And then discovered this with the Wikipedia profile. He's actually not, he's, he's camp straight. And yeah. it's just like, it's just like, the only, the only way in it is, the only way in it this makes any sense is if he's inspired by Bollywood films, where like you just throw absolutely everything at the yeah. wall and whatever sticks, that's sticks. it, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, 
again, it's just like. But again, I mean, does it surprise the Elvis Bond at the box office? No, no. But that film was that film was specifically designed for Generation Z. It was apparently from I haven't seen it, but apparently the, the editing and the camera work are just so rapid fire and so oh. whiplash. It's just impossible to watch. Yeah, no. But that, I mean, it, it, it's he's made it for that specific demographic. Well, okay, fine. But that de- demographic didn't turn up. He made it for he made it for teenagers on TikTok. Well, who's Elvis to them? It's just like. Yeah. Not gonna have him. No. Uh, and that was, that was the problem that Warner Brothers had. How do you market a film about Elvis Presley to 16 to 25 year olds who've never heard of him no. and you're on TikTok? No. And Basil Lehman just thought, oh, I'll just wrap it, I'll just cut the whole thing to death. Where it's just wrap it, finger, finger on the edit button, cut, 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 cut. And yep. it's just like two, 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 two and a half hours. Um, yeah. It doesn't really help. It, I don't think it helps that the actor that they actually had a film. I, when, when I saw him for the first time in the trailer, I just thought, that's looks nice. looks nothing he, like him. Nothing. He looks like, he looks like Bruce McGill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that's Elvis? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, Russell and John Carpenter did that type of thing better than better, yeah. better for less than um, But yeah, I just, it, it, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, when, when John says that the studios are burning down, he's not kidding. I mean, they're absolutely just in collapse. Yeah. I mean... I mean, if I was shareholder of Warner Brothers, I'd just off, off, offload shares tomorrow morning at 9, 9, 9 a.m. That's, That's just nice. like, okay, I'll, I'll come out in a couple, couple of months' time where you might, the studio product may have actually improved, but it's unlikely that no. they're not learning lessons. They are so, no. they are so ideologically committed, they'd rather burn the money. When see that, when you, know, you, 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 you would hear fanboys on, on YouTube say, absolutely taking your part every week. Hill versus Babyface were one. He absolutely loved it. He watched every episode of Batwoman, and he and he made the point that they won't they won't cancel it because to cancel the show would be the C the CW to admit that they've been rejected, that their programs are being rejected, their politics are being rejected, their ideology is being rejected, and they'd rather they'd rather burn five to six million dollars on, on an episode and just burn it when the ratings. But by, by the time that the show had been cancelled, the ratings have long gone. Not, it's not like the final season. It just, just it's like it's like Doctor Who in, in the UK. The ratings have gone. Yeah. So I wish the I wish the BBC all the best, and then they have on Doctor Who. Um, the ratings have gone. He's not he's not he's not going to pick them up. And the BBC and Russell T Davis has made, made it very clear he's not going to retcon anything. Um, he's not going to say, um, "Oh, what happened during the Chris Chibnall years? Oh, we're going to put that all right, and we're going to ignore that. We're going to put it all right. We're going to go back to the way it was." No, he's he's doubled down. As far as he's concerned, the Chris Chibnall years were absolutely fantastic. I'm going to carry you on. And at which point you think, best of luck, because you're going to need it, because that show's dead. And it was, and the BBC knew exactly. It's not like Doctor Who is made by an independent production team for the BBC. No, this is in-house. This is literally made by the BBC. The BBC knew exactly what they were doing, and they went ahead and did it. And they wouldn't admit, they wouldn't admit the show has failed. They literally went, the ratings don't lie. It's they like really, Nero. Rome's burning, but yeah, everything's yeah. fine. I mean, yeah. I mean, thankfully the BBC is going. The BBC license fee, which I thankfully cancelled eighteen months ago, it's 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 getting the government's onto a winner here because they've decided that what they're going to do is cancel it. And when the BBC license fee comes to an end in five years' time, when it runs out, that's it. They'll have to basically just um, end them in end them and keep. But but he's he was willing to pay for BBC One or BBC Six. Godness, I mean, it's got its fans. It's got it's got its fans. We're just ideologically. As, Committed as they are, but but I don't think it's enough. I, I have really said, just... I've said for the, the longest time over here with the the ABC, the yeah. you know the Australian Broadcasting yeah. Corporation should be subscription based. Don't yeah, take absolutely. it out of my fucking taxes. Don't take it out of anybody other bastards' taxes who don't want it because I am not getting a, a fair and balanced political spectrum from the yeah. ABC. I'm getting a heavily left leaning one. If you're left leaning. No, that's fine. It suits you. Pay for it, okay? Because we yeah. got Sky News, we've got our channel with, you know, all the right wing shows in it. I got to pay for it. it. Ain't fucking yeah. free. You will, you will find that around the world. In terms of left wing, in terms of state broadcasters, they are just identically left wing. You've got RT in Ireland, which is the same as the BBC. You got, um, you got the CBC in Canada, which is exactly the same. You got, you got. You got TV New Zealand, which is exactly the same, and you got ABC, and you put you put it all together. It's just like the same, the same fucking, fucking thing. Echo just, chamber, it's over and over and over again. Yeah. And it's just like you better pay for it. You better pay for it. Um, and, 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 and it's 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 true, Stu, that you, 
the ABC will literally, the, 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 the license fee is just like, so you don't even have the chance to opt out. It's just like, here, it's like, if you don't yeah. like it, ring, ring, ring up the TV licensing bureau, ask to cancel it, and they'll cancel it. And then you ask for a refund form for the amount owing on the license. And they'll send you the form, and you fill it in. You get, like, say, £40, the £40 that was left in the license fee. You'll get that back. They mm. don't encourage it. You can find that out for yourself. Yeah. But it's just like, I'm guessing in Australia, you don't even have that. No. It's just like, we have no option. I mean, I would have said, cancel the ABC for me. If you have got the ability to block that channel, knock yourself out. But uh, we don't have that. It's all government funded. And that's the problem. We'll wind this up in a sec, but we do, you know, it's mean sure. We want to go on a political rant. That's where Scott Morrison fucked up. He, was, he, he was backed into a corner and he really had the option of either, he had the option there to say, we're cancelling the ABC. We're going to, we're going to defund the ABC and make it a subscription base. Instead, he poured money into it, more money into it, because he was trying sure. to win over the left leaning supporters, which he was never going to do. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he was, he was a he, dead man walking. Once, once, once the liberal leader starts going in that, in that direction, whereby you're starting to appeal to liberal, the liberal me, the left wing media, and left wing voters, you, you've got to be removed. You, you, there's got to be a leadership challenge because that's that's you know, it's doomed to fail. It's just like. You're appealing to people who will never vote for you. No. You're, 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 you're appealing to people who are just not even going to listen. You, you just think that you're just basically a source of repulsion. It's just like, it, it, you, you get it now with that with, with, with Shirley here, where it's just like, mm. it's his, wife is all, his wife is left wing, uh, whereby she starts putting boring points into his mouth. And the next thing you know, he's repeating them. And the next thing you know, where's, where's he getting from? Like, oh, yeah, his wife. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, posted, I posted to you this morning. There's a rumor doing the rounds of Westminster that he may call a general election. For, it depends either August the earliest or September. And the reason is very simple. Keir Starmer is about to be fined by Durham police over breaking the rules as regarding the pandemic. Mm -hmm. He said previously, when you know, Durham police launched an investigation, that if he received the fine, he would resign. He ain't going to resign. Party. You know what? It's bullshit. You may say, oh, yeah. you know, I'm going to resign. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to happen. Oh, well, this is the, this is the thing. Right, because when he made that when he made the, the pledge, he assumed that Durham police didn't actually hand out historically released fines and that they had no record of doing so. What he didn't know, what he does know now, is that it was a gamble that basically turned to be not true because they did and they do. So now he's basically stuck with a pitch and a toss that he's stuck with. And if he doesn't resign, this party will basically really just 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 collapse because it's just like, well, you said you were going to resign, and then so and that's even before you get to the, to the toys. Um, but Boris is probably been thinking at this point in time, you know what, if, if he picks up his fight, he could get it as fine as early as next week. He's probably going to check us this afternoon. If I basically really call a snap general election after he's picked up his fine on Tuesday afternoon, that means he'll have to resign, in which case the Labour Party goes into a general election campaign with no leader, because the deputy leader is a fucking retard. Um, or alternatively, he can stick it out in a general election campaign, which is every day in the general election campaign hustings He's going to be harassed by the media and ask the same question over and over again. You said you were going to resign, Mr. Stummer. Why haven't you done it? And he's probably been thinking, that's worth a gamble. And Boris is a gambler. And mm. he's, and he, and the, okay. Well, the, the, that the makes sense because well, when you first told me earlier today about uh, about uh, Prime Minister Johnson calling a general election, I said, I said to you straight away, he's going to be out of his fucking mind. Yeah. But now you've yeah. laid it out. Yeah. Why? Yeah. It makes it does, a bit of sense. Does, Given, given the three and a half years he's had, it, it just, it, a Tory majority doesn't come with a guarantee. It, it would have done if there hadn't been a pandemic and a couple of other issues besides, but it doesn't come with a guarantee. But on the other hand, um, it could win it with a reduced majority. But on the other hand, it could just as, it could just as easily be a hung parliament. We, we, we don't, mm. we, we don't know. I think the attitude in the English people at this moment in time is a plague on both the houses because no one's come... In terms of the last two years, no one's come, no one's come, come out of very well at, at all whatsoever. No. Need anything? No. Um, like, I mean, plus plus the fact that if he pulls a general election now, that means if he wins it, you're talking about the idea of the next the, the life of the next government not being five years but six and a half, and that's going to be a that's going to be another nightmare Ooh, for Labour. Shit. Um, that's all that was, but yeah, it's fun and games as usual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, mate. Let's uh, wrap it up with this. Um, okay. Do you recommend this documentary to people to watch? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, um, I don't go anywhere near Netflix to be honest, but but for the podcast, I did. And yeah, it's a it's a it's a very good documentary. A couple of things they missed out here and there, but again, 
they're not going to get everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, supplementary information can be provided by the other the other documentaries on YouTube, which are, which, which are also basically worth watching. But yes, mm. it's highly recommended. Yeah, I'm I mean, saying. You, you Netflix. Yeah, yeah, I recommend this documentary. It's a uh, it's a tough watch. Um, get yourself a strong stomach. Yeah, if you've listened to what we've had to say here, you've got a bit of a basis of what you're going to be in for with what Sable's crimes were allegedly. Um, but uh, they are still quite shocking, even when you do hear them. You hear from the victims. Um, you see the, the, the distraught and the uh, the distress. Sorry. You know, in their eyes and their voice, if they, I honestly don't think they're lying. I mean, it's just no, no. no. There, there's too much. There's too much. We're not talking two or three people. We're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. This is this is just industrial industrial scale abuse. Yeah, it's literally mass scale. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, mate. Well, thanks for coming on, Anthony. You're a Thank champ. You, all right. Okay, um, well, we're going to wrap it up and um, you'll be hearing from this guy with his Rubitanga segment uh, straight after this. And after that, you're going to hear, not here on YouTube, but you're going to hear on the audio version, a little song that I found on the interwebs about Jimmy Savile by uh, Cunt and the Gang. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I will. So we'll stick that. Not here on YouTube because of the algorithms, man. One of the last no, songs on here. Sometimes life is just the only way out. So yeah, but well, it will be on. So if you listen to the audio version, you're going to get that song by Cutting the Gang afterwards. Uh, after you hear Anthony's piece here. So, um, there's. God bless, mate. Thanks for coming on. Hey, man. Fucking lifesaver. Hey. And hey, um, Jimmy Savile. Oh, right, you asshole. All right. Um, Okay, MMC, later. And now, it's time for... Rue, Britannia, with your foreign correspondent, the Nez. In a move that will surprise nobody other than those who thought that Roe vs. Wade was a tribute to modernity, a summer of top sporting action gets into high gear. Effectively, another summer of failures, bums, tomato cans, and, if you play your cards right, the odd flash of tit. The usual array of British no hopers at Wimbledon, as usual, head home before the postcards. Rain stop play. The Tour de France got underway with the usual French Johnnies blocking the roads, obsessed as usual with dressing up as fruit. The England cricket team gets a good pasting from the Indians. No surprise there, the England cricket team falls over regularly every time they bend the knee. And the usual football-based Premier League shenanigans kicks in, usually involving players on holiday getting stoned, accidents involving golf buggies, and allegations of rape from the locals. Hardly a revelation that men's failures and flaws mistakes are as much on the back pages as the front. Fun! And the Halifax Building Society had a rather large metaphorical bucket of brown shoved over their head last week when the bank announced plans to implement new woke gender pronouns. The policy will extend from staff identity badges to gender-neutral choices in regard to customer service options. The backlash was as quick as severe. Tens of thousands of customers have cancelled their Halifax bank accounts in one week alone. More to come? Who knows? Who knew that, frankly, really banks could actually have genders? It gives new meaning to the term making a deposit, but then again, Barclays Bank is cognitive rhyming slang for mutually assured affection. Comedy. And this week, Labour leader Keir Starmer finally admitted that the Labour Party had no policies ahead of the upcoming general election in less than 18 months' time. Nothing. None. Nada. Niemand. Zilch. Zero. On the other hand, how could we tell? On the other hand, given how the Conservatives have been stealing their policies for the last three years, hardly really all that much of a surprise. In short, the 2019 General Election Manifesto has been scrapped altogether. They're starting a game with a blank slate. It didn't happen. Quote unquote, if you don't change your views as you experience life, then you're probably not going to get very far. 
Another statement, given that Starmer has consistently changed his opinions over the last decade, previously he was either for or against any one particular policy issue. These days, however, it's different. He's both for and against any one particular policy issue at the same time. He's come a long way. Further notes in passing, Formula 1 driver Nelson Piquet Jr. got in a hot bother last week by using a racial slur against Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton in turn retorted that Piquet was racist whilst showing off his new black power glove and his new black power salute whilst bending the knee, pot calling cattle black. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Tory MP and Deputy Chief Whip Chris Pincher had the party whip removed after sexually molesting two men in a nightclub on the same evening. He's since resigned his position. More men have come forward claiming allegations of sexual assault, evidently toxic homosexuality. And the 16-year-old Muslim teenager was arrested at Heathrow Airport last week by anti-terrorism officers over his religious obligations. You can tell you're getting older when Muslim terrorists start to look younger. And finally, Boris Johnson dazzled fellow world leaders at the G7 and NATO summits in Germany and Spain last week, which in turn wowed world leaders in terms of his demonstrations of erudition and fecundity. After beating all cameras of Buckaroo, Shirley bemoaned the lack of a Shell Factory Blu-ray release for Shanghai Surprise, pointed Joe Biden that he was married to the Mexican singer Shero, attacked toxic masculinity on the basis that his children disowned him, and as he was increasing military expenditure by 2.7% of annual GDP, whilst having already sacked 9,000 troops in the course of three years, and admitted that his favourite member of Slade was Noddy. And he would, since he is a... 